We're blazing. Are you ready? Yes. Did that sound like I'm ready? What? Still kind of ready. Piss and vinegar. Still just kind of ready. Okay. I'm ready. All right, sir, we're doing Emma gave me a really fancy whiskey before he got into our office. You didn't get to try any. Is she unaware, uninterested, that I, too, pay her salary? <laughs> I think she's uh, uninterested. I think she's aware. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's donation day. And it's, uh, today is craft bourbon day. A bunch of whiskeys that I have never heard of ever before. How many? Five. Okay. Five bourbons back to back. All right. Now, should we, is there a progression here? Are we going? Sort of. I've, I've got something in mind, but okay. we'll see. Right. We're starting with Jared Gibbs, who actually is three of the five. And by the way, I did, did not plan that. Did I pulled did. five at random. Really? And three of the five I, ha I happened to pull were Jared Gibbs. So there might be more Jared Gibbs down there. With that math, the odds that he sent more than three are pretty good. Yeah. Jared Gibbs, you magnificent bastard. This is Scissor Tail Bourbon. This is from Moore, Oklahoma. Garrett Janko, Janko? is the owner, started this place. Cool name. Jared Janko. Gibbs. Smells nice. It is a cool name, Janko. Smells, uh... In theory, this is, he's making it himself. Now, he says, here's the thing. He says, the bottle says, I should say, the bottle says... Bottled by a Scissor Tail Distillery, uh -huh. which makes you sort of think, what? I was, I was, I was not doing that. Wow, yet. it's got some strong yeah, banana I'm saying, note no, I'm and grain on, mustiness. On the nose, this smells like it's going to be thick and rich and lively. In theory, this is with, eight uh, months old. With like a maybe like a hot honey. I'm predicting a hot honey on that taste there. So here's the thing about this label: is one, it doesn't say that they distilled it, but when I read the interview with Garrett Janko, he says he's making his own stuff. Right. Um, and then it said that this is roughly eight months old. Okay. But there's no age statement on this bottle, eight, and there's eight, no distilled by. Eight months. I don't know, man. I'm getting the color. You could conceivably pass well, as eight months. Remember, it's Oklahoma. I it's know. got the same heat that I, Texas does. I know, but unless that was like square right in the hottest part of the year, I would be very surprised if they were able to age this for only eight months and get Look, this much. Look, I got that color on our single mom in a five liter barrel in three months. Okay. So, and it was in the Texas summer. So, so it's technically possible. I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of the young, bright, grain yes. heavy with a hint of banana. Bright is the word, but... There's a, there's a honey note in here that is pretty... It smells nice. Pretty robust. It, well, I should say it's very fragrant. It sort of jumps out of the glass. And then that, that alcohol is kind of peppery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, young and peppery. Oh, yeah. Dude. So, so definitely young, but a lot is of... Is it, though? A lot, well, a lot of the common pitfalls... Yes, it is. But a lot of the common pitfalls that young whiskeys fall into... Doesn't have any of them. Doesn't have most of them. Well, no, no, it's the, not a pitfall. It has a characteristic of a young whiskey. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Young whiskeys are going to be young, and there's going to be characteristics that lead but you But then to... there are pitfalls. Okay, but this, though, the thing that leaves me a little bit wanting, I will explain after I go into the things that I like about it. That honey is there. Mm-hmm. In the taste, mm -hmm. it's very buttery. It doesn't have a really long finish. It sort of vanishes. Brown. It's a thin brown sugar and honey. Yeah. And then it was a 45%. But man, so, the finish for me, yeah. that's like, okay, it's hard for a young whiskey to finish strong. And this was, I think, the weak link in this. But uh, if this is, if he's making this and it's only eight months old, no, that, then follow that place. So, because exactly. For context, for reference point, if I'm comparing this to other whiskeys that are eight months old, it's like, damn, that's a good yeah, eight kicking, month but... old whiskey. But uh, I'd be very interested to see what this turns into in mm -hmm. like a couple of years. All right. So uh, do we want to do the other? No, well, I'll save those. Let's do Sugar House Bourbon Whiskey. I Have I heard of Utah. This, this is, is Salt Lake City, Utah. Is this a well-known thing? I have no idea. Sugar House sounds familiar. Maybe it's a different. Does it? 
Maybe it's like a barbecue joint. Thinking about know. the Sugar Hill Gang? Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, Jason Newman donated this bottle, and we know Newman. Newman. Jason Newman, you magnificent bastard. This is also a bourbon. This is, according to them, mm -hmm. this is James Fowler and Eric Robinson. They're wow. the gentlemen responsible for this. So I don't know if I'm too close to the eight month old whiskey we just had, but I'm getting some really interesting notes on here. This is wood. This it, is a wood shop. It's, it, it's antique wood. You yes. know what it is? It, it's the reclaimed and wood. Leather. The reclaimed wood shop we went to. It is yeah. mixed with, um, so, not new lumber, it's old reclaimed wood they pull off of barns. If you imagine going into the Old West, going into Wyoming yeah. or northern Utah or, you know, somewhere, or northern Utah, and you find an old, fancy mm -hmm. bar in the part of town that dates back to the early 1900s, yeah. where you walk in and they got the big chandelier and there are leather chairs everywhere yeah. and wood floor and wood walls and stuffed animal heads it's on the wall. Really interesting nose. That's what I smell. I really like this nose. Me too. This is maybe the most wood heavy nose I've ever smelled. These are, they're whiskey notes. And like sawdust. They're whiskey notes, but it's, they're pretty rare. It, the, 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 the whiskeys where you get, you know, this uh, reclaimed old wood type of note. And then there is, I keep wanting to say raspberry, like an unsweet raspberry. I haven't gotten to the sweetness in the nose yet. No, oh, So man, I think, there's, um, there's some kind of dark berry that, maybe a blackberry? I don't know, I can't put my finger on what exactly this this sweet, fruity berry note is that's complementing this old reclaimed wood note really nicely on the nose, but wow, I'm excited. And this is at 46. 46, okay, and did you say the age? I uh, don't know the age. Don't know the age. Don't okay. know the age. It tastes exactly like it smells. Wow, it really does. Yeah. Everything that you're set up for on the smell, follows through. That is the most spice wood finish. This is small batch number 12, mm. in case anyone's wondering. That is, and now, I will say this, on the taste, it doesn't go, I, I, I don't think this is, gonna, this is gonna be a very aged whiskey, very old whiskey, because again, with the finish, it finishes kind of thin, but those flavors that are there, it's like, wow, those are nice and rare. I'm not gonna say like they're my favorite flavors of all time, but, uh, they're good, and I very much appreciate how exotic it is to pull stuff like an old reclaimed wood and like a dark berry out of you know an American whiskey like this. I'm finally getting the berry, and it's actually tasting a little bit more like berries and cream, like okay. actual creamy, milky oh, kind of notes. I could, okay, all right. And that's why it's not. I'm not able to find a single berry. It's sweet berries. Like a, like a combination of berries. Mm hmm Okay. Got like a fruit bowl. I think it lingers a little longer, but it's the wood notes that linger a little longer. Fruit bowl there. If it's any kind of berry, it's going to be a slightly bitter tang to the berry, like a raspberry. Yes. yes. No, I'm, that bitter tang, I'm attributing to uh, the reclaimed wood. And you get like yeah. that. that uh, it's probably well, damn, mineral. that's two back-to-back. I actually enjoy. I actually enjoyed, and two back-to-back -back that I wish, oh, if this was just a little bit... A little bit older, there could be uh, some well, more you know saturation. Some more saturation in these notes, but they're both lovely. It means that the future's even brighter than the present. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, cave. <laughs> you have in a moment. It's cave Creek. Cave Creek. Well, well, first let's do the bathroom. Was this thing. the thing? Yeah. So, so hold, this hold, is hold on. Sean Daniel ends. would not shoot. On time, I'm. I have things to do, and I sit in his office, and he told me to be here at a certain time, and I know, it's like it's never going to be when he says I'm going to be sitting there wasting time for like ten or fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm thirty minutes into this thing, and he's laughing his ass off researching because I found this, this commercial <laughs> that the, the this cave. It's Creek, on their website, the Cave it's, Creek, and I will say this: it's amazing. Daniel was, he was hysterical. With yeah, it. I was. <laughs> I. I will say the old man they used in this commercial yeah. is probably the single greatest old man ever used in the history of old men on TV. <laughs> it's a great old man. Go to their website and check out the commercial for the whiskey. It is amazing. So Cave Creek whiskey, they have a. Is it okay? This is from Sean and Nika. Sean and N E C N E C C A. Neka. Neka. Nita. Sean and Neka Riley, you make a visit. Bastard. 
Okay, you ready? I'm ready, man. So this is a, we don't know anything about this whiskey because it's definitely sourced, but they don't say where from. And even their company says uh, they're a beverage company that goes around finding good spirits. Right, fair enough. It's a Sonoran beverage company, I guess based out of Phoenix. Oh, well, they, I think they found a good one. Just one second on the nose, I think they found a good one. Oh yeah, you know, this is a, now, it should say where it was distilled on the bottle. It doesn't. Come on, guys. You can't have an old man of that caliber. There's a coconut. You can't have an old man of that caliber and then phone it in yeah. on the label. Yeah. That's high. That's top shelf old man. Um, this is a straight bourbon whiskey, the so fact, it's at least two years old. There's no age statement, so in theory it might be four. The fact that this old man, when he's swinging the, pi the pickaxe, uh, yeah. swinging the pickaxe, he can barely swing the beat. <laughs> and I've been on like I've been on sets like this where you're asking somebody to perform an action on camera and you know this is barely within their limits. <laughs> and I can just picture the guys behind the scenes going, Oh my god, don't die. Don't, don't hurt die. yourself. Don't, don't hurt die. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so this has got a coconut note to it. Like a toasted coconut. You know? I'm very annoyed at you right now. Why? Because I've never been the first one to say there was a coconut note. And I was excited. You oh, you were this is gonna be your moment? I was going to say All right, let's Daniel, rewind. Daniel, have you found the coconut note? And you would have been Oh my god, it really is there. Uh, this is older and a higher proof, I am assuming. Sixty forty six point five percent alcohol. Okay, so that is ninety three. That's proof. just a fantastically drinkable bourbon. Mm -hmm. Um it's hard to really give them props because we don't know what they did other than create a really cool bottle and Bottle somebody's bourbon. You know, honestly, that could go toe to toe with some of uh, your favorite yeah. big national national brands when it comes to bourbon. Yeah, if you don't care how it's made, you just care about how it tastes. Yeah, this is a fantastic bourbon, mm -hmm. and if they were charging a reasonable amount for it, it would easily be a go-to for me. Yeah, the nose. Now that I come back to it, has a little more mustiness to it. Coconut brown sugar. I'm gonna say brown sugar. Yeah, but there's a dusty, slightly like a vinyl, oh. like hot vinyl seats in an old car that's in from, Texas and summer. That's just straight from the alcohol there. That's the. I don't think that's the alcohol. I think it's the alcohol. I think that. No, hotness... I think there's. I think there's some uh, like long chain congeners or esters there. Are... They aged it in balloons. They aged it in... Uh, they filled the whiskey into balloons and they hung the balloons. They aged it in a Datsun sedan <laughs> from 1978 <laughs> with the carpet and the vinyl seats. Fruity, sweet, thick, saturated honey. Yeah, it starts thin, sweet, it rounds out into honey and finishes with that slightly metallic finish. Yeah, it's probably the, the nicest, most complex one so far. We're gonna review these together instead of one by one. Mm -hmm. These are also both from Jared Gibbs. You ready? Gibbs. I'll do one, you do one. Jared Gibbs, you magnificent bastard! So this is Cave, Cache, or Cache Creek. So not Cache Creek. Not, we just did Not a, Cave. Not Cave Creek. This is Cache Creek. This is Cache Creek. A lot of creeks. This is a, supposedly the business is in, also in Moore, Oklahoma. Okay. But here's the thing. Wait, wait. Is it's Tennessee whiskey. So Cash Creek. There's no information that I could find what? easily on this. You just said what which one of these was from Moore, Oklahoma? The other the first one we did, Sugar. Okay, and then this is also from Moore, Oklahoma? No, Sugar. Scissor Tail. Scissor Tail. Scissor Tail is from Moore. This is from Moore, not the same company. I don't know what these guys are doing. Their website is dead. They've got two different links for websites, both of them are dead. Both of them list no information. Right. Uh, their Facebook page has no information, and their bottle says it's Tennessee whiskey. Okay. Now, one of it is a four-year-old Tennessee whiskey, and one is a twelve-year-old Tennessee whiskey, and the only difference is uh, eight reserve years. batch. Eight years is the difference. And special reserve. It's eight years. So I'm gonna pour you the twelve. Eight years. Pours me. The and I'm gonna pour me the four. Oh man. It smells lovely. It smells like Tennessee whiskey, I'll bet. Um, I can't speak to anything that they're doing, because I have no idea. Ah, so, on this 12 year, they, did they just call it a whiskey? Is this yeah. A no, it's a bourbon whiskey. It's bourbon whiskey. You're going to have that um, brown sugar, but then also get like a thick thread of vanilla. And 
even a coffee out. note, like a sweet coffee. Oh, like a sweet coffee on the on the. 12. Well, and we're doing two different. No, ones. We are doing two different twelves. So I'm, I'm looking for the different age here because. And I'm thinking it's a different distillery. I mean, same story. You think? Sure, trade just a nose. Mm -mm. All right, yes. no, those different, different, different smell, but same yeah. distillery. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't Again, know. I think maybe. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the same. Boop. I'm gonna go on record. Boop. I'm gonna say me boop. Well, I'm going to say eight years makes a big difference in the distillery's product. I, yes, it does. But, but I think it's still the so, same base so spirit. Interesting moment. What commonalities are you finding in, between these two whiskeys? The heavy we, vanilla cream. The heavy vanilla, because I was finding the vanilla too. I didn't find it in the four year. Oh, yeah. It's there. Okay. It's sweeter in here. Right. It's more like vanilla bean in here. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll try a taste. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's a great whiskey. Oh, that so, somebody made. <laughs> I'll tell you, the 12, it's a really good whiskey. The twelve year. It's like a buttery vanilla, a buttery vanilla on that twelve. Uh, but there's more of a, of a wood finish to the twelve than to the four. Surprisingly, as soon as you taste it, you can spot it. It's more so, similar. I'll say it's more similar on the taste. Yeah. Okay, so try that. What's left of it? Okay. Oh, this has some. Nice oak spice. Yeah, but look for the same commonalities. The vanillas and the... Uh, honestly, the, the main thing, I can find a little bit more... Uh, I can find more vanilla in this 12-year. Yeah. But the biggest commonality is going to be the oak. Yes, they still have van the vanilla, mm -hmm. but for me, oak is dominant in this. There's a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla is dominant in the 12-year thing, and it's a little bit of oak. This, though, what's interesting about this... I, this cannot have possibly uh, possibly been aged 12 years in a state with a really hot... In Oklahoma. There's in no a, way. In a hot climate. There's this absolutely no this way. This would have been so... Unless they had like a climate control type of facility. Mm -hmm. Been so intensely oaked and woodied. That's okay, a word. so this says... It's a word, woodied. Enjoy Jeff T. So I wonder if Jared got it signed by whoever he picked up the whiskey from mm. in more. And if so, Jared... I, Get Jeff to send us the info on what the hell's going on here. All right, that's it. Here's that was donation day. Stealing injury. I feel like that was it was too fast. This has to be like a forty-five minute long, and that's like ten minutes. It was twenty minutes. That was ten minutes. Of you in the corner. Yeah, it's a, it's a seventeen minute video. You were lost in the corner. So do you want to just do something else real quick? Just real quick. Just real quick. Sure. Can I do a, a random point? I'm gonna spin in a random point. No, 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 I'm gonna get another gift whiskey. Oh, oh, we have another gift whiskey. So we've got a box of Patrick Cohn whiskey that's so large. Patrick Cohn. Yeah. You know what I would love to do? What? Because apparently the highest echelon of donations is going full Weddell. Right? Yeah. I want to make a full Weddell jacket. Yeah. A full Weddell jacket. I've been on that. And I already know kind of the design that could be amazing. So I already know what it's, the base of the jacket is going to be. I know the base of the jacket. What things should also appear on the full Weddell jacket? In the comments, let us know. All right, Patrick Cohn. <sighs> just, just, just calm down. You're, you're, you're stretching yourself too thin. It takes a certain caliber of man to step up and say, Patrick Cohn, you magnificent bastard. You really did just sit down, didn't you? You, just, you told me to sit up. Yeah, well, it was the first time I ever told you to do anything, and you actually did it. Uh, wow. Patrick Cohn has magical powers. Patrick Cohn sent us, among other things, a Stranahan's sherry cask. I'm gonna have to. And I think we've already elevated him. In the name of Patrick Cohn, Daniel, you, this is you, what you're doing now. Here's the thing, you magnificent bastard, him, but he's already a patron saint, and he's probably a Weddell. See, that's why he didn't participate, because he knew it was totally incorrect. Yeah. He's at least a patron saint. He's, he's, he's at least a patron saint. He's definitely Weddle once we finish with all the other ones. All right, he's working towards Weddle. Patrick Cohn, you patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> now, I think Stranahan's is amazing, and so I, it's hard for me to be objective. Yes. They're making really good malt whiskey. Patrick was actually here 
last Friday. Wow, and he brought all these samples. Yeah, he's a lovely human lovely human being. Great and my guy. first uh, true Mizunara cask finish that wasn't a uh, Shivas. So, this it is... It was so good. Th he brought this Mizunara oak aged thing. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because we've, we've, had, a, we've had a Mizunara thing mm -hmm. here. And it wasn't until that moment where I had that reference point that I knew absolutely, okay, I now understand what Mizunara oak brings to the table. I don't feel like I'm there yet. Oh, I got it. It's really locked. yes in Japanese whiskey totally it's locked down the commonalities between whatever mise en our thing we had and then Patrick Cohn's thing. Oh no, I think there's more to it. No, than that. no, 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 no. Do we, you need to. Do, do we have any left? I think we finished. it. We had the shivers. I think I showed up and we finished. Yeah, it. we. He let us finish <laughs> because he's a gracious human being. Yeah. Well, yeah so straight okay, in. sherry cask single malt whiskey wow. from Colorado. That is berries. In, that's the. Berry heavy berries and cream. Yes, this is a true sherry cask single malt. Yeah, I mean this is crawling in towards Scotch territory. No, oh, oh, yeah, dude, this could totally pass for a Highland. No, if someone poured this for me, yeah. Oh my God, the taste! If someone poured this for me and said, "Here, how do you how do you like the space side Scotch?" Right. I would I wouldn't argue. The only difference that I will float is. The oak note on this is probably more of an oak note than I would get from actual Highland Yeah, there's scotches. a little more ending bitterness. But I think it complements all of the stuff going into that really well. The rich berries, the, man, the, um, there's like a, it's a light honey, not a heavy honey. And there's, what is it? It's not a citrus, it's a lighter fruit. Say something smart. Well, there's just, there's so many things. There's uh, <laughs> plum. There's slight fig, there's a finish in slight barrel bitterness. Right. There's pepper. There's this is absolutely a complex whiskey. 40, yeah, and 47%. So my brain is stuck right now because all I can think of is all the sherried scotches that this reminds me of. After you have a sip and you go back to the nose, a couple sips, you go back, you acclimate. So, I will tell you, wow, that's great. Patrick, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to uh I'm going to share something. Uh, you need a moment. So Patrick gave us a bottle of Sherry Cask Finished Stranahan's. Okay. It wasn't this one. Okay. So this His one, is unopened. This one's because we already had one opened. This one's not on the books. It's on the books. Oh. That's batch two. I thought we almost said contraband whiskey. Patrick Cohn sent us what? batch five. What? Are we comparing? No. Is that what is that what's happening right no. now? Are we comparing no. right now? No. Then why would you bring this up? No. I just, why? At the end of an episode where people cannot get like five out of six whiskeys we just did. I'm going to put the five in my would secret you, stash. Would you? <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Fight me, fight your friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.